Hello everyone, we are back again. Now, last time in our previous videos, we discussed the Newton's laws of motion, particularly the Newton's first law of motion, which is the law of inertia. And we also have the Newton's law of acceleration, which deals with the relationship of the forces to acceleration. So today, we will be continuing our series of discussions about the Newton's laws of motion, particularly in the Newton's third law of motion, which is called as the law of interaction. Or sometimes you call this one as action-reaction. Now, from this discussion, we can realize that there is no single force in nature. Because the moment that you exert a force onto something, you brought a relationship between you and the one that you have exerted a force to. It says that when object A exerts a force on object B, object B exerts an equal and opposite force on object A. So to imagine this one, suppose we have here a wall. We may just call this wall as object B. And we have here an angry person. Maybe this person is broken hearted or whatever realization he has. And he wants to punch this wall. Now we call this person as object A. And he exerted a force towards this wall. We call this force as Fa on B, or the force exerted by object A on object B. According to the Newton's law of interaction, there is always a reaction coming from this wall. And that reaction is the force exerted by this wall towards you, and we may call this one as Fb on A, or the, or, or the force exerted by object B on object A. And we might not realize this one, but this is the reality. The harder you push the wall, the harder the, wa the wall push you back. Or the harder you punch the wall, literally, the wall also punches you back. And this magnitude of forces are the same, only that they have opposite directions. Because basically, if the force is going, or the action force is going towards the left, the reaction is going towards the right. An obvious example is when a person is swimming. Suppose this is the body of water. Okay. And there is a swimmer here. Okay. Anyway, this is just a rough drawing. We call this person or this swimmer as object A, and we call this body of water as object B. When this person swims, of course, he exerts a force towards the water. This force could be called as, or we may call this force as, Fa on B, or the force exerted by this person towards the water. It depends on what action you are doing. Maybe you are kicking the water for you to move forward, or you are just punching the water, or whatever action you are doing. According to this Newton's law of interaction, the water actually exerts a force towards you as well. And we may call this one as Fb on A. And this is the very reason why when you are kicking this water, you move forward. Because literally, from this Newton's law of motion, there is always a reaction. The harder you kick, the faster you move forward. And this is the very reason why those swimmers or those, um, those persons that are exerting a larger force are actually gaining a faster speed. Another example is the interaction of a falling ball in the earth. This might not be so obvious, but if we understand this concept, we realize that there really is an interaction. Suppose this is a ball and this is the earth. We call this ball as object A, and we call the earth as object B. Now, when the ball falls, the earth actually exerts a force towards the ball. We may call this one as Fb on A, or the force exerted by the earth towards the ball. And this is due to the, uh, a lot of factors could be considered, but of course, this is due to the to the gravitational acceleration of the Earth. Because as we know, we have this gravity, which has a value of approximately 9.8 meters per second squared. Now, obviously, from this law of interaction, the ball pulls up the Earth. 
and this might not be so obvious to us, but actually there is a reaction from the ball. So this is F A on B. When the ball or when the earth pulls down the ball, actually the ball also pulls up the earth. The question is, if the ball pulls up the earth, why can't we see the earth moving towards the ball? So the answer lies on the Newton's second law of motion. As we know, the acceleration is inversely proportional to the mass of the object. This means that as the mass of the, of the object increases, the acceleration decreases. And obviously, the earth is very, very heavy as compared to the ball. And this is the very reason why we can see the earth moving towards the ball. So this is the law of interaction. If you have some questions regarding this topic, you may just comment in the comment section. You just have to remember that in this law of interaction, according to Paul Hewitt, or this is actually a quote, a quote that I have read from the book of Hewitt, the conceptual physical science. It says there that you cannot touch without being touched. Thank you so much.